says that, Ella. Thank it's you. It's okay. No, I want to tell you how you can do that as well. Thank you. Oh. All right. Joining me now is the grandson of Morris Sachs, David Fleischman, and the author, Anne Dublin. Welcome to the CJN Daily. Hi, Ella. Thanks, John. Great to be here. And we'll start with you. Tell us how this story fell into your lap. It fell into my lap because Dave uh, brought it to my attention. He contacted me. I don't know how, Dave. Uh, maybe you remember. He contacted me and said, and I heard you write books for young people. And I have a story I want to tell you. I think you should write a book about it. So first I said to Dave, no, I'm busy. I'm working on another book. But Dave was um, persistent. And he said, just, just meet me for coffee and we'll talk. So I did. And he started telling me the story about his grandfather, Morris Sachs. And I'm telling you, Ellen, I was hooked. I, I thought it was a wonderful story. I love writing about uh, Canadian Jewish history. I like writing about orphans and I love music and all of those uh, themes, all of those elements came together in one. So I dropped all my other projects and started working on this book. Do you remember when, what year it was that you two first met? How long from when that happened to when the book came out? Two years ahead? Three years yeah, or so? Yeah, I think so. Um, from the time we met, I think um, the book took about a year or so to research and write. And then uh, after I got a contract with Second Story Press, then of course it took longer uh, with the editing and uh, the layout and, and all that. So the book has just come out in March this year, 2021. And by the way, the name of the book is Jacob and the Mandolin Adventure. You called yourself, your, your film, David, um, a man of conscience. And, you know, you've compared him to Canada's Schindler. Yeah. Have you done enough? Has this book going to help put him in his deserved place in Canadian Jewish history, do you think? You know, I think anything helps. When you mentioned Schindler... It sounds a bit corny, but when I, you know, when I saw the movie Schindler's List, I said, I have to, I have a story to tell. And yeah, it, it all helps, I guess. Um, the book would be, is great. Um, there's a woman named uh, Nita Pronovo, and she's the vice president and editorial director of Simon & Schuster Canada. She wrote a piece called, it's a pitch document for a six-part TV uh miniseries based on the film it's called in the promised land and I, I think that would be a great thing because it's it's got something that uh, you know it's really got universal appeal same as these things uh, same thing goes for for Anne's book immigration um, discrimination refugees seeking a safe haven and a sense of belonging they're all really relevant today in Canada and the states so it's something that all immigrants, can relate to and we need more people like that out there and more stories like this I think you know you know Ellen um one of the things one of the facts that really struck me when I was doing the research is um between the two world wars there were about 20,000 Jews in the town of Mesrich where these orphans came from in Poland by the end of the war 75 Jews had survived from that original population because most of the Jews were sent directly to the death camps. Uh, they didn't even have a chance really to go to a labor camp or a concentration camp. They went directly, most of them, to Treblinka. So as the daughter of Holocaust survivors, you know, that really touched my heart, that fact. And I kept thinking that if Morris Sachs hadn't provided a home, a safe place um, for these Jewish orphans to come to, they most likely would have perished. I'm sure it killed him to the end of his days that he couldn't have done more for more. And also how many, how many kids were born from the original 79, you know, so... That's a good thing. 
Do you know, know how many? No, there yeah, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know how to how I'd even figure that out. But are no, any no. of the 79 still alive today? No. When I made the movie in 1996, we had, I think, five of the orphans and they were 85 years old back then. So they're all gone. You know, one of the things that shocked me when I read it was that Frederick Charles Blair was not the villain in this story. He was actually your grandfather's supporter, which would shock Canadians who read None is Too Many. Tell us about that part of Canadian Jewish history that people don't know. David. Dave, oh, Dave, oh, sorry. Yeah, well, Anne's book, uh, you know, she's coming at it from a different angle because it's a fictional piece. And there, I guess there's no need to uh, mention Blair in that. And a lot of people don't like to talk about these things. But, you know, as a journalist and a historian, and when you do research, you deal with facts. So when I did the movie, I came across, I got about over 400 documents and letters from the Ministry of Immigration. Um, and they're in the National Archives. And it, there was a lot of information about this guy, uh, Blair. And, um, you know, it's, uh, he, I, yeah, he was an anti-Semite, but I guess he, he had a, a special relationship with my grandfather and they both wanted the same thing. They wanted to teach kids how to farm because that was the only way you could bring kids over. So, you know, I guess they had their own agendas, right? And they had to play the game a little. Right. But then to find out that of all the other schemes and um, agencies and immigration um, groups that were trying to save Jewish people from uh, Europe at the time when Canada's and America's uh, borders were being closed. Mm -hmm. These were the only kids that were able to come in uh, before the war because Blair was helping them, which astounds me. How do you think Canadians will, re will, will see this? Because it, it, it kind of puts him in a better light. Um, that's for me. Well Maybe yeah. I can answer yeah, go ahead. that. Yeah. I think that um, Blair had a special relationship with Morris Sachs, not only because Morris was a farmer, but also Morris had served um, during the First World War as a, a translator or an interpreter. And so Blair had a lot of respect for Morris and, and that built up the, the trust. But, you know, it wasn't 100%. Um, there were a lot of conditions that went along with letting these uh, Jewish orphans come into Canada. And the minute, maybe I could say even the second, these conditions were broken, then the whole scheme started to fall apart. Right. And there we, then we get the other guy we don't like to talk about, which is Greenblatt which is, you know, that, that was another part of, for, for the movie part of it, not your, not your film. But, you know, I guess, you know, they, he had a mandate. My grandfather had a mandate with the government. They had to be a certain age. They had to stay on the farm for a, a period of time. And most importantly, they, they had to be orphans. So this Greenblatt fellow who owned the orphanage in Ms. Rich, um, the first group that came over, they were legitimate orphans in 1927. The second group, and then you know all about this. This is a, goes back to the archives and all that. The second group came over in 29 and Greenblatt saw a way to make money and he didn't bring over orphans. He lied to my grandfather. He brought, went to wealthy families, Jewish families in Europe and charged them. And this is all documented between 400 and $600. He pocketed the money. In the meantime, my grandfather's laying out his own money to try and keep it going. But, uh, you know, after a few months of talking with the orphans, he found out that he had been fooled, you know. So that it's kind of sad, that part about it, because we'll never know how it, it could have ended up, you know. Uh, when this ended in 33, and then the later years, at, you know, at the end of the war, my grandfather tried to re reopen the farm school, and he couldn't, partly due to what had been done in the past, I guess. It's an amazing, amazing story and an amazing Canadian. It should have its literally a plaque, definitely, in Georgetown needs to be done. 
Yeah. Is that something you want to do, you guys, now that the story is coming out, you know, more broadly? Let's do yeah. it, Dave. Let's I'm, do it. I, yeah, we need a plaque. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if we think about Canadian heroes, never mind Canadian Jewish heroes, but just Canadian heroes, yeah. I put Morris Sachs up there, right there on the list. That's because... Nice. You know, we talk now about social justice, about being a humanitarian. He was it, he was the epitome of it. Um, he, through his actions, he saved all these, these um, poor orphans uh, so they could learn a trade, make a living and become um, valuable citizens of Canada. Yeah, and yeah, also I don't, I don't mean to preach, but I mean, if anyone is a hero in my book, Morris Sachs. He was so uh, he really persevered. He was so tenacious with this because he believed in it so much. And you have to put it, you know, the context is this overlapped with the depression at the time. The farmhouse was the farm school was from 1927 to 33, and the commodity prices were low. Funds had you know all run out. Uh, you know, he had to look after his family and his business, and at the same time, the 79 orphans. So he had a lot on his plate then. But, uh, you know, you got to be that way to make things happen, I guess. And I it think did I said take you a had... toll, right? It what? took a toll on oh, the yeah. family. Tell us well, about that a bit. With the family? Uh, yeah, well, his wife, in the last few years, cooked the food for the kids, and then she, she had a heart attack a few years after that. Um, but you know, I guess there was, there was just a lot of detail and a lot of work to, to keep that going. It wasn't as easy as it seems. How many of those, uh, original kids, cause that was the first boatload actually went to Carnegie Hall. Did they all go or were they all in the orchestra? Even the girls? I think most of them were, weren't they Dave? Yeah. I think most were, I don't think they all played, but I think most were there. Yeah. There's this fabulous old photograph of the kids, I think in the Montreal uh, train station, and um, most of them are carrying a mandolin, and it's, it's just great. So I think they probably went to New York um, to perform at, at that Carnegie Hall concert in June in 1928. Now yeah, that how do you get, do you get to part. Carnegie Hall? Yeah, it's not exactly. practice, practice, practice. It's you have to be an orphan from Poland. <laughs> but but can, can you imagine though, Ellen, being an orphan, you're in Poland, you've got nothing, and you end up at Carnegie Hall? That I think is fantastic. And I don't know how my grandfather was able to get them. I couldn't find out how he, because they did concerts to raise money, and I don't know how he got them in there. And um, David, you know, you've seen the book, of course. Were you uh, you were consulted all the way uh, with all the you know, did you have any input in how it would look or have you only just saw it like March whenever it came out? Yeah, I saw it when it came out and I just thought it was, it was so well done. It was great. It really is. Uh, it really is a story that uh, everyone can relate to, you know, like I was saying before about immigrants and kids and all that. It was, it was great. I, I'm very happy and excited about it. So now what are you guys planning to do for the fall? Like when school's back, are, is this going to be on book orders for libraries? How, how are kids going to know about it? Well, I hope so. I've already done a few virtual readings at schools and the kids are great and they, they have lots of good questions. So um, that's how I, I like to do it, just spread the word. And uh, then we'll see. We'll see. It, it depends if teachers and librarians pick it up. Thank you guys. I know it went a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, it was really an honor to meet both of you guys. Thanks so much for being with us on the CJN Daily. I had a great Thank time. You. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Take care.